One more uh, question about early on, because I'm a little bit fascinated by this, because I've known uh, lots of artist friends. Those, those are always my favorite people. Uh, mm -hmm. If you've got some kind of artistic bend, musical bend, come sit by me. Let's talk. Uh, if you're a poli-sci major, to come back in a couple of months when you figure out what you really are, then let's talk. <laughs> right. I, 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 love, I love artists, but I also know that there for there's a bit of uh, what's was survi survivorship bias uh, comes into play when I'm talking to people who are successful in the arts, because mm -hmm. for um, every Rob Harrell who puts in the time, waiting tables, fighting, having that that late night anxiety, I'm sure of oh my God, if I became a lawyer, I would have a nice house by now. I <laughs> or sure. or I'd be working uh, 78 eight hours uh, a week, but with the promise of a nice house uh, eventually. Right. And, and a solid plan, and I don't have that, and am I a fool? And you, you've got all that existential dilemma, I assume. Um, but for every story like that, there's also a story of the person that went through all of that, didn't have the success that you've had, and ended up getting a job that's not as good as the law job they could have had if they'd started uh, on a more straightforward path. Um, not to bum everybody out that's listening, but I know a lot of, uh, know a lot of writers, I know a lot of artists, Sure. I'm talking to you. So something right away, the, the, the anecdote about you selling the T-shirts tells me a big part of this is you've just got more hustle than a lot of folks I've known. Now, something about artists, it, it, it's a general statement, so I better not make it. But it does. <laughs> I have met a number of lazy people who happen to be artists, and they're extremely involved when it's their thing and the stars align. And the, yes, this is my vision. I'm a little bit that way myself. Uh, is if I if I can see that this is the thing I want, then I will stay up uh, every night for a week and it will be there. And uh, you never saw me work so hard. But if you come in and ask me to do a reasonable thing that I don't want to do, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. So what what uh, what was it about you, if you know or if you have at least some theory that uh, puts you in a position where somebody would would take you seriously, want to give you a comic strip? see that you're capable of, of producing the work required? Um, oh, that's tough. But I, I think um, I've seen some people who work harder than anybody I've ever known at, say, artwork. They work tirelessly. They will stay up till four in the morning every night drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing. But those people sometimes all they want to do is draw and draw and draw and draw and draw. And they don't want uh, critique. They don't, they're not open to critique. They're not open to making changes and things. And then sometimes they're not also, also open to doing the things that aren't working on your artwork at three in the morning. Um, sometimes you have to be a businessman. Sometimes you have to be a, um, you know, know how to write a nice letter, uh, you know, uh, how to reach out, how to, sh I almost said the word schmooze, and that's not what I mean. I, I just mean you got to be able to socialize or make connections. Um, and and um, that would be my one guess. I, I just that um, I, I think I got a well-rounded education at DePaul. I was a liberal arts school, I think, um, you know, that, that helps me every day when I sit down to write. I think I just have read a lot. I know, you know, um, but I also think it taught me how to make connections with people, how to, you know. Um, so it's very tempting sometimes to want to just be like, I'm going to be the best at this. I'm going to draw and draw and draw for, you know, 20 years. And eventually someone's going to notice me and make me the next great artist um it sounds like a solid plan on paper why isn't it <laughs> i i think the problem is that is that you know it, well no one's going to know about you if you just sit in and and you know and so unfortunately now like nowadays i think you need to get on social media you need to put your stuff out there you need to um make connections you need to and I, I, i'm saying all this that's not the stuff i like doing i would rather sit in my office and draw all day or write all day um but I've learned that you have to do some of that stuff. And I, I again, I'm just drawing it. I'm, I'm picking at straws. And uh, and if that sounds, again, I don't want to sound holier than that or anything to anybody. I, I just think um, sometimes it is luck. Sometimes it is uh, having the 
drive to get out there. And like you said, I may, I may have scrapped a little bit to, to get, you know, to, to I think you have to just try. You have to throw out every, go after every chance that comes along. And uh, and I will say, when I was an illustrator, I did so many jobs that I would never show you, um, because you know I needed to earn a living. And uh, but I, what I did by doing those jobs, and you know, I, I never considered myself above doing those jobs. I did those jobs, and then I got connections within the advertising agencies and the design agencies. And, and um, I learned from those people and eventually the job started getting better. And, and um, I started getting to do jobs that were actually in my style, things like that. So I think um, you just have to really plug away and, uh, and don't turn any opportunity down. You never know what's gonna come of it. Um, that's, I think that's the best I can do at answering that. Uh, because it is kind of the, the golden question. Like why, and, and I will also tell you this, um, about 10 years ago, uh, 10 years ago right now, I was writing Monster on the Hill. And I was at, I was in a panic. I was in a flat out panic. Um, I didn't know, you know, we were having trouble making the rent, that sort of thing. Uh, I was, you know, having you visions. Got, you got Big Top going at that at, at that point. And uh, Big Top had ended, and uh, oh. and then yeah, and then well, and actually the period was really 2007 to 2009. I guess was the worst period where I was like, what am I doing? And uh, so those those things that you mentioned about uh, laying up at 4 a.m. thinking I've completely messed this up. I you know, thought I was better than I am and I can't get a job. And I, you know, I went around to, I think every design firm and every ad agency in, in um, Austin and it was a really hard time. And I, so I took a video job. I started filming video of the um, like Texas public government commissions and the Texas school board and all this stuff. And I would sit in the back room and film them. And it was actually while I was doing that, I got bored and they're filming these meetings and I started sketching characters and I ended up coming up with the monsters that became Monster on the Hill and uh, sort of led me out of all of that. Um, Nobody minds so, that you, the videographer was uh, clearly working on a book in the back. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, was, I was hidden. They couldn't see me. Uh, you know, I had, I had remote cameras and so I, all I had to do was kind of punch buttons and move the cameras around and figure out who was talking. Um, but sometimes one person would talk for three hours and you'd, you know, start doodling. And uh, but anyway, you know, that was a really scary, scary time. And I started thinking about, have I gone out on the limb and then cut the limb off? You know, I can't get back to the tree because I didn't have a backup plan. Uh, and um, yeah, it was rough. So I, I feel completely for anybody who's in that position. And, uh, and, and, and I can only say it's amazing what 10 years has done. Uh, I refocused. I got busy on a project, not even knowing if someone would buy it. I just started working on that graphic novel. Um, and then, you know, one thing has led to another. And, uh, and you know, I'll, I'll probably lay awake tonight thinking, what if this is it? What if this is the last book? Um, so, <laughs> Doesn't that happen every book? Doesn't that happen every book? Yeah, oh, I think so. a little bit. I hope it does because it terrifies me. And uh, you know that 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 creeping feeling in your heart, like what if what if I'm out of ideas? Um, yeah, so it's tough. It's tough, I, and I I would imagine it'll be tough. You know, I think about actors. Actors, you know, every job they do is great, but then that job ends, and they have to think, uh oh, I got to go start auditioning again. Um, so. Start pitching sequel ideas. <laughs> yeah, right. So my 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 heart goes to anybody who's out there trying to trying to um, score a book deal or or write a book or. Um, well, there's yeah. nothing holier than now about any of that. That's all practical from your heart, 
good information that people can can put to use. And as we were talking, it occurred to me, uh, just as a natural contrarian, that there are plenty of folks that um, went and got a four-year degree, maybe got a master's degree, uh, that then found themselves in America uh, in, in, in 2008. Uh, got, got to help you. I was a stockbroker that year. I, I remember. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, or finding themselves recently graduated now in the time of quarantine. So uh, I don't think that there's a path you can pick that you ever get to be out of the completely out of the lying awake, panicking just a little bit at night. I assure you, frustrated artist who is listening, if you'd gone with the, the four year dental school degree, however long it takes to become a dentist, probably longer than four years, whatever. Uh, if you became a dentist, I know a dentist right now. Every time I see him tells me he's panicked. He knows his business is going to close. There is no <laughs> completely safe role. Uh, where everything is gonna gonna work out 100% just as planned. I don't think that or whoever got that role, they're they're not telling us about it. <laughs> well, and e even somebody who you know, say I had gone and become a lawyer, um, I feel pretty confident in telling you that even if I'd been a successful lawyer, I would probably be miserable, and I would be there would be a huge tug in the back of my heart, thinking, why didn't I follow my creative thing? You know, because. Um, that's that's where my life has led me and and uh i will take those 4 a.m nights of panicking about um what's going to happen next uh just to know that i'm 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 being creative and, and making a living being creative it's it's pretty exciting so when uh, or has this happened yet when did you finally have that feeling of oh i've i've done it I, it's going to be okay. I've got a nice house in Zionsville. I'm, I'm happily married. Things are going pretty well from the Rob Harrell universe. Or have you ever felt that sense of relief of here I am, it's, it's, it's done? Uh, yeah, I'm hoping it happens anytime. Um, now, <laughs> I, 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 it's I, a smear of rumble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'll be it. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because every once in a while you, you, you know, you hit a triple. Or, or what do you, you know, I've never hit a home run in my career. Uh, I've, I've hit some solid doubles, stuff like that. Um, and, and not to get too crass and talk about money, but there are some times when you get a deal and you get a check and you think, all right, this is it. Um, and that la feeling lasts for, you know, a week, <laughs> a month, I don't know. Uh, and then quickly you realize, oh, oh yeah, well, what's behind that? Um, so, yeah, I don't know that I've had that feeling yet, to be honest. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll let you know when I start to feel comfortable because uh, that's kind of a scary thought. Um, I think you just have to constantly be moving and thinking about the next thing. So, um, not comfortable yet. I think I've talked with all the – I'm trying to think of the authors I've talked to on the show, I don't think I've talked to anybody yet that told them that they were 100%. I talked to Sharon Draper, and she was talking about, you know, her fourth or fifth, I don't remember how many times, being invited to the White House, all the awards she's won. Uh, and she's <laughs> just got that little feeling of, ah, I better write another book. I'm, I'm a little bit apprehensive. Like, I could be in trouble here. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm terrified right now because I don't have another book in the, you know, in the works. And, and uh, I mean, I have, like, like I told you, I have several in the works, but... Uh, I don't have anything locked down, and uh, that's a scary feeling. And um, you know, it tempers the fact that yeah, I feel I'm really excited about this book coming out, and I really hope it does well. But I don't know that. Um, so, I think um, anybody who gets too comfortable is is um, maybe isn't thinking enough about it. <laughs> if you had perspective, you know how uncomfortable you should. You'd be. never be comfortable. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I. That's what I that's been the deal I've earned, I guess, is I get to write books, but never be comfortable. So um, I'll take it. 